All right, guys, welcome back to uh, Tales from the Crypt episode reviews. We are now in season two, baby. Season two. Episode one, and we've got a huge star in this first episode. Yes, now we might start seeing those really big, like, A-list stars. And it's truly, like, before they were famous. Maybe she was famous, <laughs> but it's like Demi Moore's still a, a 30-year-old at this. This episode was one that I found it was... Did we see the title yet? Dead Right. I didn't remember the title, but I also didn't remember how good this episode was. Like I looked back and I was like, I don't remember if I liked this one or not, but then this time we watched it, I did really like it. It was a good one. Loved it. This guy with the weight issue, he was as hideous as sin. It was hard to look at him. It's like um, they put like a suit, a fat suit even on his face. Like he yeah. looks like a mix between the penguin from Batman mixed with the whale. Totally, you're, <laughs> you are one million, that is such a good, totally what he is. Yeah, such that vibe. Worst, ugliest sugar daddy I've seen. And then he and had no money. I know, so yeah, what kind of sugar daddy it was? So first of all, we also know this actor. It's mm -hmm. Jeffrey Tambor, I think his name is. Even with the fat suit, you could see through and see the eyes and the head. It's an old bald guy. He's in everything. He's the star of what's the show? Trans transparent. <laughs> I forgot the name. He's the star of that show. And he's in a bunch of other stuff. You've definitely know this guy, but he is made to be so ugly. All right, so let's go through the premise of it. We have Demi Moore and she's just like cutting work or she's on her lunch break. She's like, I'm going to go see a psychic because whatever. Psychic says you're going to lose your job and you're going to find a new job. She goes, whatever, that lady. That day. Right. That day. And she's like, well, that's not going to happen because my boss is on vacation. So what Whatever. And she goes back to work after her lunch break, which she took too long on. And guess what? Her boss is there. And she took too long on that lunch break. So he does can her on the spot. Now her boss is another actor everyone knows, Earl Bowen. You've just seen him in a million things. He always plays the grumpy guy. He's just got a small role in this, but he looks the exact same. He's in Terminator. He just looks, that guy was 50 forever. Anyway. <laughs> well, Michael recognized him. Um, and yeah, so then she, on her way back from work, I guess heading home after she got fired, another guy calls out, hey, do you want a job? He works at um, a, a rest. Club. It was like a strip club. It's a strip club. Yeah, he asks her if she wants to be a waitress. It looked like a restaurant, but all of a sudden it was definitely a strip club. Mm -hmm. Of course, but it was like they had tassels on their boobies oh, back then. Yeah, HBO <laughs> didn't. Well, I've seen some boobs in this. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, he's like on the main street going, hey girl, you need a job. And then all of a sudden she just turns into like such a hoochie mama. The clothes she's wearing, the body language, the way she talks to customers. She was born to be this strip club waitress. Yeah. Yeah, she just owns that gig and she's yeah really into her new job it all happens quickly and because it all happened the way that this gypsy psychic predicted she goes back and she wants to know more and the psychic says you're gonna meet a man who is going to die soon after and leave you with all the money you could ever hope for yeah she says you're gonna be rich you're gonna have this life of you can have this life of like jewelry and yachts because demi moore's character her thing is like she just wants to get rich the yeah so the gypsy woman the psychic tells her that she's gonna meet this guy like michael said but he's gonna be she basically foreshadows the fact that he's gonna be gross but if you suck it up and marry this dude, he's going to fall into a fortune and he's he's going to die. So you're basically going to marry him quick and you won't have to stay with him long. You'll get that money. Just suck it up, basically. She did also spell out that he's going to be big and gross, right? Yeah, big, like a big fat so and gross. Oh, yeah. She was expecting, okay, it's going to be like John Lovitz. But what she got was even worse. Man, yeah. this guy is hideous. He's like... He's as wide as two people. He's got craters all over his face, a big gross nose. Not even a nice personality. He's no, a pig. he's he's like forceful, perverse, um, and he's broke. So it's just like the worst combination of things. So she meets him at the club. He's a customer.
her and she's like, yuck, this man is nasty. He starts asking her out, chasing her around. And it doesn't take long for her to realize that this is in fact the man that the psychic was talking about, unfortunately for her sake. She went back to the psychic who confirmed, yeah, that's him. Yuck. Also, she mentions at some point that his breath smells and uh, he smells. So that makes him even I think she said something about grosser. like the folds of his fat stuck. <laughs> I think she said oh. at the end, she says something about like wash your body. I don't know. It was just gross. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> oh, it was so he's trying to kiss her and whatnot. Anyway, she just says, you know what? Forget it. I'm. He said he had a relative who had a bunch of money out in LA or Vegas or somewhere. So she's like, okay, that's where the money's coming from. I'll suck it up. I'll do it. That so uncle's probably going to die soon. Yeah, then, he said that, right? And then, yeah, well, I think she figures that because he says it's an uncle. I don't remember exactly what was said, but regardless, she sadly marries this nasty guy. And um, her marriage is also terrible. He's so gross. Like she has to wash his dirty underwears that are the size of a house. Um, he's very chauvinistic, ordering her around, wanting his food, like just the worst husband. So yeah, you get the picture. Anyway, it all turns out that the guy's broke and he ain't dying anytime soon. She's like, I've had enough of this guy. And, and this relative, he, he exposes that this relative actually has a family and kids and stuff. So she's like, what? Money's not gonna come from him because he's gonna pass it on to his kids. So what what am I in this? Like, where's my money? Um. So she goes in a rage back to the psychic and says, I can't do this anymore. The psychic, and she says, says you're wrong about this he has no money etc etc and the psychic's like after she say i'm never wrong mm -hmm. now what she predicted was that she will meet a man who will inherit a lot of money and die in a violent way soon after so what the psychic predicted is accurate it just didn't play out how demi was interpreting it so soon after she ends up walking into a store she's the thousandth or ten thousandth customer and they award her a million dollars on the spot so yeah. she did inherit a bunch of money. Yeah, she did. And now she's like, wow, I got this money with no help from this scrub. So good riddance. I can finally go tell him off. So she takes her million dollars. She first goes shopping immediately, comes home with all her fancy stuff and all her cash and comes home to him. And he's chopping some veggies in the kitchen being looking nasty. And she just says... I don't need you, basically tells him off. Oh, she tells him how gross he is, how disgusting he is, how little she she doesn't want anything to do with him. How stinky he is. All the things she's been bottling up for a long ass time. And because she's like, I don't need you. And she's like, I'm going to go. I don't like, she just said she's going to go. Here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go to my life. She's rich now. Well, she didn't need this loser. So as she heads for the door, well, he basically decides if I can't have you, no one can. Yep. So the story does change. And this time he grabs like a big cleaver or knife, whatever, big and, and he goes right uh, for the bosom. Yeah, the heart. Um, so again, and the stabs psychic her. said she will meet a man who will inherit a lot of money and die in a violent way soon after. Now she definitely died in a violent way. She inherited the money, but because she dies, he ends up inheriting the money. Yeah, so it was it was like a right prediction, but with maybe with Demi's character getting like mad and changing the story something changed i don't know that part i, I didn't know really well, we were watching it a little confused i i see what they're going for i don't feel like that was executed perfectly it leaves the viewer going wait but she inherited it not him i'd get that you know it all came true money was inherited and he kills her but it wasn't exactly as bang on as you would hope right yeah and because she ended up dying the violent death after so i don't really know about that but it was definitely a twist to say the least and a sad one at that i would never want my last moments to be at the hands of that gross guy and knowing that he's gonna take my cash too Ew. They, they really needed to find a good woman to play that role because to be honest with you that woman is a total bitch she's a kind of a hoe she disrespects her boss she doesn't want to do any kind of real work she just wants everything to go her way and so much bad shit happens to her but because it was Demi Moore you actually like her yeah she's a bitch of a woman so yeah I really enjoyed this episode um very fitting as
as we had just watched The Whale and The Whale just won an Oscar. Um, but And Demi Moore and Bruce Willis are all over the news. But yeah, it was, it, you know, for a show that was made in 1990, it really holds up. It's a fantastic show, great sets, great location, great acting, great script, all that stuff. So we very much like it. It's a, it's a high one for me. I'm going to go somewhere like 7.5. That's high. I'm going to go even higher because I liked it. This might be like my favorite one we watched so far. So I am going to give it a nine. Whoa. That's probably my best rating so far. Totally. Yeah. She likes the girl ones with the girl leads. I know, but this one was even like more juicy. Than Sin Deep? Yeah. Now that I'm looking back. Mm. Watching it for the second time. I know her favorite episode. Uh, it's about it's a the girl same. with a mask. Oh, yeah. Anyway, we'll get to that. That's so guys, at the end. But you know, that's... This is just our personal channel. This We watch a lot of shows each night after we do all our YouTube work. And uh, we thought this would be something that we could just share with you guys. We have fun talking about it mm -hmm. at night. And uh, we hope you guys like it and subscribe if you're following along or whatnot. We do want to talk about other shows because we watch so many. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm. So let us know. That 70s what? show? That 90s show? <laughs> yeah, that's I like that. The Mayor of Bridgetown? <laughs> Is that the if name? Michael can get the title right. What's the name of that? Kingstown? Yeah. The Mayor of Kingstown? But as soon as they stopped filming in Hamilton, yeah. we liked season one. Come back to Hamilton, mm -hmm. Kingstown. <laughs> All right, guys, so that concludes today's video. Uh, we'll be back next week with another Tales from the Crypt recap. The next episode is titled The Switch. And it's Ooh. another famous actress. Ooh, I don't know. So you guys can just go over there and watch that video now. But for us, we got to take a couple days off, watch the next one, film this video, edit it, post it, yes. all that good stuff. So we'll see you guys in another video. Bye. Boom.